You're watching The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. We cry for a revolution, and yet the seed of transformation has scattered around, around us. According to Sir Walter Rodney, African had no history until the advent of the European. But if we believe that history is a way of a life of a people, and African had people who had a way of life before the advent of the European, then African had a rich history and culture before the coming of the European. Welcome to Buduku, the metaphor for Nigerian cultural renaissance, a pathway to unlocking the rich history and cultural heritage of the black man. One disposition common to the Igbos worldwide is the inherent desire to reconnect to their roots and refresh their filial connection during the Utah period. Brothers and sisters from far and wide come home to rekindle the kin spirit. Despite the opportunity of this life-sustaining, bonding annual gathering, various state governments in Nigeria, in this eastern state, have failed to seize the opportunity of the moment to showcase their rich culture by promoting festivals and cultural carnivals that would encourage tourism migrants. Where the state government have failed, the Buduku community has chosen to stand tall by using the opportunity of Utah season and the hope coming of their kings and kin to showcase and harness the cultural opportunities the community has to offer. Why borrowing a little from today to tell the story of their yesterday to their children for the sustenance of generations of tomorrow. The town of Buduku is a charming, lovely community located in Idi Aton North local government area of Imo State and is home to a lot of diligent, enthusiastic people with notable distinguished ladies and gentlemen. The event, which is tagged Obuduku Day, where culture meets modernity, under the leadership of Ben Obidegu, an accomplished lawyer, showcases an array of entertainment activities, such as the glamorous Obuduku Cultural Festival, masquerade display, traditional Igbo dance competition, local wrestling competition, akin to that described by Chinua Achebe in Things Fall Apart, Things Fall Apart, rather, the Ugebe Obuduku Maiden Beauty Pageants, parade of royalty and other side attraction. In this era of unemployment, insecurity, and youth restiveness, various states can use such traditional festivals to harness potentials, provide employment, drive tourism, while showcasing the rich cultural heritage of Nigeria in a global world where our culture is gradually giving way for anything West. Who knows? As Yuri Hedima won of Igbo land. Anyway, the title I gave myself. Just like the Calabar Carnival, when it first started, I might just be spending my Christmas in Obuduku this year instead of a family vacation abroad, maybe going to meet uh, Fola Shade. <laughs> if you can grow our culture, we can grow our country. I was already praising you, I was getting carried away. <laughs> yes, one, no, you must pronounce it very well. One. one. Mm. Yes. I'm, I'm looking it's forward to Obuduku. Obuduku visit. Yes, so Obuduku. Obuduku. As, as you have painted it. Um, I, I completely disagree with. Um, Walter Rodney. Rodney. Okay. That, Don't um, mind him. Africa. Uh, had no history. Was, yes. We had no history. We're frozen That's in a time. big lie. Mm. In fact, uh, Africans colonize the Euro Europeans, the okay. Moors, you know, and incidentally, they're from West Africa, Malians. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, so we had this history. And that's the mistake we're making. As long as we allow people to tell our story, yeah. they'll keep depriving us. Yeah. They start with little things, like associating black with bad things, yeah. and white with good. So yeah. constantly you think, oh, because I'm black, I can't do anything mm. good. Mm. Or black, you know, it's... So it just, it, it, it digs deep into our psyche that now we want to be like them. Mm. And we lose value. We, we lose all, all the culture, heritage, the beautiful yeah. heritage we yeah. have. You know, Africa, Nigeria is blessed it with... Is. Nigeria. Rich culture that we're not harnessing the at potential all. At, at all. all. Look really at the outfit you wore today. You know, the yeah. Igbos who want to look like you. Yes, yes. You know, so we, why can't we celebrate it? Yeah, this, you know? I think so, we people sorry, really before want you. It, no, to be honest, yeah. do we really want it? We want to be Westernized. The typical home now speaks English in their home. I think the only people that now do it that I know. I lived in the north for twenty F something years and. Houses always, anywhere they go, in London, Houser. America, that's speaking, Houser. just like the Chinese. Yeah. Nigerians are not speaking the language anymore. It's always English, even speaking with an, an accent, mm. you know. Hey, yo, yo. We, don't, we don't want to maintain our culture. We are ashamed to even say this. I mean, if, in our school, for example, at Leposh, the children, when we introduce them to yeah. Yoruba yeah, languages. It's Leposh now, that's why. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's posh, posh, but still, posh. We, we promote culture. Okay. And when we start to even tell them, say, Eka Aroma, they start giggling and laughing when we tell them to prostrate that. It's new to them. Mm. So what are parents doing in the home? I, I, 
very firm believer that most of the issues we even have in this country starts in the home. Yeah. We don't even want to tell our children the right way to greet anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uncool to speak like this. It's uncool to do that. So now telling them to, um, it's that to same, start doing obo It's that same like, what's mentality. Obo that's what I'm going to get. No, no, sorry, what you, you have to sit back. Let's, let's, no, quickly, let's dissect no. your cake. Okay. No, no, no. To, <laughs> he's coming. I, I want to, I agree with both of you, mm. and I want to take it a step, step further. Okay. I don't I think in there. Nigeria Maybe that we from. Ha really have a concept about tourism. I went to Zanzibar a couple of years ago. Mm. It's such a small country, East Africa, for those whose geography is Most people have heard of Zanzibar. <laughs> I have to confess that when my daughter said I want to go to Zanzibar for her, her it was a, a Lama um, birthday, I had to go and check my, um, my map. Wow. I wasn't so quite where sure. Is it? But anyway, everybody didn't hear that. But I was really struck by a number of things. One, even though it's a very small country, they have really harnessed all that they have. And tourism actually is their main, can I say? Stay. Mainstay in terms of um, finance and resource in generation. Tanzania. Yeah, Zanzibar. Yeah. Um, one of the things I was struck by was it was very safe. You know, they, 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 they actually were very proud to tell us. We were three young, three women. I wanted to say young. I'm not so young. No, no, you're young. What is it? Three, three women traveling, a, traveling alone. Mm -hmm. And they were very keen to let us know that it was safe to go out any time of the night. And it really was. Mm -hmm. And they had really harnessed their tourism. And I stood there at one point and I was really sad. And I thought about my country. And I thought, we have so much, as, to, we have so much to offer, but we have mm -hmm. not harnessed it. No. But of course, there are other things we have to look at, isn't it? Like security and safety. Yeah. If you, you know, harness them, you fight those other ones. Yeah. You have to deal with those yeah. ones first. Yes. Because at the end of the day, the reality is, even in my own country, I wouldn't feel very comfortable going out at 2 o'clock in the me, morning. Let me borrow from what Libros just said. If you harness them, then those are... Because I'm, we had a certain former governor of Calabar State, uh, uh, Donald Cross Duke. River. Sorry, Cross River. Mm -hmm. Donald Duke, who was saying that actually he made his focus tourism. And by making his focus tourism, because it was like a one stone traps all, yeah. mm -hmm. suddenly he knows that if he does tourism, he'll deal with unemployment, he'll yep. deal with, because suddenly you want to make your house tidy if you want to mm -hmm. invite people into it. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, just jumping across to what uh, Ronke was saying about culture, part of what I was reflecting on when I looked at the Obuduku story, it's, it's actually quite remarkable. They are thinking, they're thinking about what they're doing. So they have, one year they have, they're appealing to the young people, next year they're appealing to people with, you know, older people, they have themes to try and involve everybody in the conversation around mm. Obuduku. So the young, if you go to their sites, the young want to identify with Obuduku, the old want to identify. So they're, they're using their brain and they're thinking, how do we keep this conversation current? So the kind of culture I'm interested in is one that is engaging people. You're not trying to say, oh, let's go back to the good old days. You're, you're appreciating that we're not where we were, but we want to also carry along the things that represent what we had. So I don't want to keep flogging people and saying, speak this language, but let them appreciate the language. You have to find that, a way of making it attractive. That's where the, that's the where, what I wanted to add. That's where the, the problem is. You, you find that, that, that this mentality of African had no history before we came. Mm -hmm. and, and so we are giving you history. Mm -hmm. and, and so that curriculum was you know, pushed down, and then we expanded the narrative. And so to that extent, we're still keeping that narrative. That is why you know, some people will be scared you, you know, be comfortable to teach their children foreign language. We talked about foreign religion. Mm -hmm. You know, every other thing African is bad. It's their fake gods, their fake religion. You know, but you suddenly discover that these same people that once came to tell you that yours is not good, they are learning your trade, they are learning your culture, they are learning your, mm -hmm. your way of life. Mm -hmm. and, and so why don't you find a way of harnessing this, your culture, promote it, let people know that it's safe, to practice. If the Jews did, did not export religion to, to the rest of the world, today to. we will be talking about <laughs> Jesus Christ and all of that. So, like, so in the same way, like we that. really don't really want it. <laughs> That's think, about, uh, uh, everything. think about about two years ago, the Ghana must go back. When it was in England, and I understand that Louis Vuitton bought it and rebranded it. Yeah. And then people, Nigerians went to and shops abroad and started buying. That's, 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 well, that's what I'm saying. Is, I said, we said we to, no, you, you borrow, you, you, we have to you make it take a culture. I agree. But I, do, do, do no, you won't want it until you, it's presented people, to you in a way. I am here now. I'm here dressed in this attire. I, I think it's very much about the packaging. Yes. So let's talk about Afrobeats. I mean, Afrobeats is storming the world. Yes. And it is one avenue that I think that we have become very yes, successful. Yes, our fashion well, industry. And our fashion yeah. industry, where people want to buy. Mm. So I think it's about the packaging. I completely yeah, I, agree I, I with think, you. I think and, and so add, sorry, quickly. Mm. Look at, before now, the way Seydou is dressed, 
It wasn't fashionable, but today it's been rebranded, and everybody wants to dress like this, including the Europeans. Yeah, like and so like what we fast. need to do is, this is our culture <laughs> and tradition, let us harness it and, you know, also promote it amongst ourselves first, so we understand the ideas, and then, you know, take it out. Yeah, remember, right. remember Arugungu Festival before now? Yeah, For I, now, I was, we gradually will stop talking about that, it. You know, um, again, when we allow people to tell our story, we, and Unfortunately, we tell the bad stories. Yeah. We go out there, oh, Nigeria is horrible. Nigeria is this. We need to start projecting positive image for Nigeria. And that way would address all of those issues that we're talking about. Well, you have said it. We are certainly for progress and development on the advocates. Your feedback is a crucial part of our crusade. As concerns Nigerians, one of the wonders of the world. But Mike TV says, Madamuche said my mind, and she hit the nail on the head. Bravo. On the same topic, Florence O.K. Allison says, well said, folks. I do hope that the good news will happen soon. AK4J247 says, the job of leaders, the elite of the society, is to lead the general populace towards a place of enlightenment, freedom, and actualization. It is for every privileged Nigeria to grow a pair and start direct action to bring the nation to its promised land. To catch up on previous broadcasts, go to www.plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, Ekene says, women know your place. She can't be serious, or can she? <laughs>